Hello and welcome. This is my YouTube channel where we discuss issues that matter for consumers, manufacturers, governments and other stakeholders. In today's video, I want to talk about Europe's energy policy and I want to highlight why its decision on green policy involves errors due to current circumstances. In light of the European Union's 26th of July agreement to cut gas consumption by 15% over the next 8 months, it's important to discuss the current state of Europe's energy crisis and how we got here. While a confluence of factors has led us to this point, it is important to highlight that the stage for the current price pressure was set long before Russia's tragic invasion of Ukraine and the ongoing conflict that is causing widespread global anxiety. Much of the blame and spotlight has been placed on Germany and its over-reliance on Russian oil, coal and liquefied natural gas. However, this Merkel era reliance has its roots in the EU's continued push to reduce carbon emissions and forward a green energy-centric agenda. It is vital that we protect our planet and reduce the considerable damage being done to the environment through carbon-heavy means of energy production. Unfortunately, the implementation of this transition has led Europe and much of the Western world to confront some uncontrollable truths. A conscious Western effort to cut back on fossil fuels without having the capabilities to fill the capacity gaps with renewables has led to the uncomfortable arrangements with countries such as Russia and Saudi Arabia to fill in that void. Many are now lamenting the US's scaling back of its shale oil production which would have certainly eased the burden on Europe and reduced its reliance on Russian energy, which is not the focus of much discussion from both an energy and price and sanctions perspective. Much criticism has been made of European Union sanctions continuing to allow for the purchase of Russian fossil fuels, which accounted for approximately 63% of its export in 2017. Adding fuel to this fire was the use perceived war on nuclear energy, particularly in the wake of the 2011 Fukushima disaster. In 2011, Germany has 17 nuclear power plants running. After the Fukushima disaster, it began a denuclearization program that would have it shut down its remaining plants by the end of this year. The simultaneous reduction of fossil fuel production throughout the EU, coupled with the downsizing of nuclear power, led to an over-reliance on Russian energy that accumulated in the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, a project that many Western countries opposed but only officially cancelled after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. This policy error has had three key effects. Hurt the legitimacy of Europe's green agenda by highlighting that reduced fossil fuel production was being offset by imports from countries with questionable leaders and conduct greatly contributed to inflation in very harmfully squeezed households already suffering from price increases on the other goods, many of which are the result of the current conflict, greatly reduced the impact of sanctions, as Russia is still allowed to partake in its largest export market. The pressure has only increased as Russia slashed natural gas flows on Wednesday 27th of July, causing gas prices to rise 14% intraday to over 234 per megawatt hour before settling up 2.5 higher at the market close. These price increases, supply changes and their resulting political fallout has led the EU to pivot on its green agenda and make some compromises in an attempt to ease the burden on both energy markets and the household at the end of the supply chain. In early July, the EU moved to consider natural gas and nuclear power as green energy under certain circumstances. This move caused mixed reactions, with some deriding it as a Europe's abandonment of its commitment to green energy. With gas in the taxonomy, the European Union has missed its chance to set a gold standard for sustainable finance. Instead, it has set a dangerous precedent. Politics and vested interest have won over science, said Lawrence Tubinia, CEO of European Climate Foundation, in a statement. However, others such as David Blackman, an energy-related public policy analyst and consultant, said it reflects the growing recognition that the green energy transition is going to be much more complex and difficult than originally imagined. Ultimately, Europe is caught between a rock and a hard place. Renewable energies do not currently produce enough energy to cover its needs, 
while its primary source of fossil fuels is now a global peria waging war in the front yard. Policymakers must now balance the needs of their people and the economic pressure they are facing with a moral hazard of continuing to economically support a regime that has shown itself to be the antithesis of the EU over the past two decades. While the war in Ukraine may have been the catalyst, the foundation for this crisis were laid many years ago with poor planning and a rose-tinted view of the future. Europe, and indeed the Western world at large, cannot afford to make the same mistake twice. Thank you. If you like the content, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.